Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, Miami, they would all be underwater. In fact, the entire state of Florida. This could be the view of Miami, now 50 miles out to sea. Across the Atlantic, the water would reach all the way to central London. It would be the same story for coastal cities all over the world. In low-lying countries such as Bangladesh, with much of its landmass at sea level, would be almost wiped off the map. How long would that take, that kind of apocalypse of water, if you will? Well, the temperature change would be this century, and how long would it take the, the ice sheets to respond? That could be 50 years from now, could be 100 years from now, but it's not 1,000 years from now. For many who live in the South Pacific, the encroaching sea is already at their doorstep. In February 2006, on the tiny island country of Tuvalu in the South Pacific, residents brace for what may be the highest tide they've ever seen. Predicted to reach 11 feet, the people here could be forced to flee to higher ground until that tide recedes. Tuvalu is no stranger to flooding, plagued by the occasional storm surge and extreme high tides. But this time, things are different. Tuvalu, only 16 feet above sea level at its highest point, is now in danger of becoming a modern day Atlantis, threatened by the rising ocean around it. The high tide on Tuesday was a very, you know, very shocking to me to see that the tide was really high compared to the, the past years. Until recently, says resident Diana Samey, higher than normal tides appeared regularly, but briefly in January or February. Now these abnormally high tides are occurring for almost half a year. The flooding is more severe, sustained, and widespread. Added onto that, it's the erosion. Uh, our islands have been eroded very badly to the extent that some of our small islets have disappeared and some are on the way to disappear. Like most residents, Helia Vave, Tuvalu's senior meteorologist, can only watch helplessly as her country drowns. The islands of the South Pacific are made of porous limestone and coral rock, and high tides actually swell through the ground, flooding Tuvalu from the inside out. To build barrier walls against the ocean would be pointless. We're so definite that things won't get better. Uh, things are just going to get worse and worse. If the oceans continue to rise, many of these small island countries will simply vanish into the sea. Scientists are in a race to figure out how quickly that might happen. Sea level can be a difficult thing to measure. And there are few records before the 20th century to help scientists measure how sea levels have changed in the last few hundred years. One of the oldest tide gauges ever found is on the Australian island of Tasmania in an unlikely place called the Isle of the Dead. We have very few long-term records of sea level, so this does fill a much-needed gap in our understanding of uh, sea level rise in this part of the world. Records from the gauge carved in this rock show that since the 1840s, there's been a sea level rise of six inches. It's one of the few long-term records that confirms what scientists believe is happening worldwide. In the last 100 years or so, the planet's oceans have risen anywhere from four to 10 inches. But the rising water isn't just a result of the tremendous volume of ice melting into the oceans. Scientists are convinced that global warming is raising the temperature of the ocean as well, and that can have a dramatic influence on sea levels. A side effect of that warmer 
ocean is the thermal expansion of ocean waters. That thermal expansion is causing the sea level to rise. When ocean temperatures warm, the water literally expands, taking up more space. This thermal expansion alone may account for more than half of the rise in the sea level in the last century. The projected rise of three feet by the end of this century will do more than threaten cities such as New York and London. The beach, the very reason we go to the coast, may disappear before our eyes. For every foot of vertical sea level rise along the east coast, a typical beach loses about 100 feet inland due to submersion and erosion. In the U.S. alone, this erosion could destroy more than a quarter of all structures built within 500 feet of the ocean and wipe out more than half of our coastal wetlands. But it's the rising temperature of the oceans that scientists fear could impact coastal communities the most. Like the air, it has also climbed one degree. That may not seem like much, but when the entire ocean gets warmer, the atmosphere reacts, resulting in all kinds of dramatic and dangerous weather around the globe.